In this video we continue with image fusion, now moving on to direct PET-based brain spatial normalization. With an appropriate distribution of the tracer and the right templates, direct matching of brain PET data to a PET template is also possible. This is also a solution for the many standalone PET scanners still in use around the world. FTG is a good example of a tracer where this direct PET to PET template matching is possible. On the left of this slide we see the individual rat FTG in the brain that we will work with in this example. This will be matched to the PET template that is part of a general set of resources in the Fuseit tool. Each of our templates corresponds to an atlas, which corresponds to an MRI that was used for the anatomical definition of that atlas. This means that for a given atlas we have a range of templates, whether MR or PET or SPECT or various PET tracers, ultimately resulting in volumes of interest, which can then be directly applied to the individual PET data, allowing us to extract time activity curves for kinetic modeling. In this exercise, we'll use the FUSIT tool to perform this spatial normalization of the rat brain FTG data shown here, so that we can extract time activity curves for kinetic modeling. Therefore, the output from this exercise will lead you directly into section four, exercise one, where we'll, we'll perform full quantification of glucose metabolism for the same rat brain example. So we can start by opening the FUSIT tool and in the configuration we will set the default matching mode to deformable. Next we select the data that we will work with, in this case from the Bruker PCI database, RAT3, Dynamic FTG Brain, and then on the Series tab we can select the dynamic PET whole body that has been cropped to the brain, saving us some processing time in this example. When we open this series, it will be selected as the input image and fuse it. Now we see one of the middle frames of this dynamic series where there is still a lot of noise during the tracer uptake period. We can select the last time frame of the dynamic series and adjust the upper threshold so that we see the anatomy a bit more clearly. And so we see we have clear uptake in the brain and the hyderian glands and we can generally see the shape of the rat head in our image. An even better average for matching to the template can be created by averaging some later frames. In this case, an average of frames 20 to 23 works well. So in the lower right as the workflow, we can set the species to rat. Mouse is detected because of the small volume of this cropped image. Then we can enter the range 20 to 23 and calculate the average. To see it more clearly, we can reset the upper threshold of the color table. We now have an even more clear image of the late FTG uptake. And this average will be used to match to the template, and then the transformation that we calculate can be applied to the dynamic series. We can now proceed with the deform workflow using the usual workflow button. And this takes us to the reference and matching page. Here we can select the template to be used. And in fact, we have two rat brain FTG templates available. These can be accessed from the templates button on the right hand side, where you see we have an FTG template corresponding to the PX rat Schiffer atlas, and lower down we have an FTG template corresponding to the PX rat Groningen template set, which in fact correspond to the PX rat Schwartz MRI and atlas. So for this example, I will use the FTG for PX rat Groningen, and then the template will be loaded, and we will see the fusion display of our two images, and as usual, we can use the fusion controls to see how the images correspond. The template image is very smooth, and as we move from one side to the other of the fusion slider, we can see the difference in the shape.
Now we can start the deformable matching workflow using the match current workflow button. The transformation calculated using this average image will then be used to normalize the dynamic image once we're happy with the result. These calculations could take a couple of minutes depending on the processing power of your computer. Once the calculations are complete, we can assess the result using the fusion controls. Creating a contour for the outline of the template and comparing it to the normalized individual is often helpful. We can do this using the contours button in the fusion controls, selecting only B for the template, and then using the fusion slider to display only our individual data. In this case, the result is acceptable, so we can save the transformation to the database to avoid having to repeat the, the calculations if we reanalyze this animal. The Save Transformation button is on the lower right, allowing us to save the transformation to the database. In this case, the transformation we're saving corresponds to the one we have pre-saved for you. This will be the individual FDG matched to the Groningen template. And to distinguish the data, I will label this as the test. The transformation can then be applied to the original dynamic data using the button Apply Current Transformation to All. This will take some time since there are 23 frames. Once the application of the transformation is complete, we can proceed to the VOIs page. Here we can switch to the dynamic pet using the list of input images in the lower right. Then we can select the PXRAT Groningen VOI Atlas from the template tab. In fact, we'll have the same outcome whether we use the Groningen or Schwarz versions, but we use the Groningen FDG template. Then I can outline the VOIs. Again, we can expand the tree structure and see the many VOIs that exist for this atlas. Then they are outlined onto our data, which again can take a bit of time depending on the processing power. allowing us to calculate our time activity curves. There are two options for convenient transfer of the time activity curve from each VOI to the kinetic modeling tool. When you will proceed directly with the modeling, the kinetic modeling button to the right of the statistics options calculates the curves and allows direct transfer into the kinetic modeling tool. Again, because we have many VOIs and 23 time points per VOI, we require some processing time. And then the send buttons become active for sending the data to the kinetic modeling tool. Alternatively, we can calculate the statistics using the general statistics button or selected statistics, saving time by only calculating the average and standard deviation. Then in the VOI Statistics Viewer, we can change the format from Statistics to PKIN Time Activity Curves and save the statistics to the database. This PKIN tax file format can be easily loaded from the Kinetic menu in the Kinetic Modeling tool. I'll save these PKIN tax as .tac file as my FTG PET Atlas VOIs. In this case, I distinguish this run through as my test.
and that file will be loaded when we get to section 4 exercise 1.